In the last episode of the series, we discussed the genesis of the Maquis, how the stalemate at the Cardassian border wars and Federation capitulation helped to create an undercurrent of dissent. We discussed how Cardassians had badly treated Federation citizens on Cardassian planets, and how the Cardassian High Command would ship in military-grade weapons to its citizens. We discussed how Starfleet would promise to do something about it, and never did. Since that video, there have been some good counterpoints brought up in defense of the Federation, and a few more ideas that I've thought about while I'm doing my research. First, during this time, Starfleet would face a lot of its greatest threats. The Borg, a renewed Romulan threat, and others. Additionally, it's not like the Federation wasn't doing things diplomatically in an attempt to curb Cardassian aggression. From the context clues we get from The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, we can safely assume that the pressure the Federation was putting on the Cardassians is the main reason that the Cardassian High Command decided to pull out of Bajor. It's also logical to assume that this isn't the only impact the Federation was having on the Cardassians. And, I would suppose, if you look at the fleet of the Federation, it was a bit stretched due to the fighting with the Borg, as I had stated. If you add to this that most of the Federation was still highly pacifistic, then I suppose one could make an argument that the demilitarized zone was a necessary evil for what we have. Especially if you are offering to move the people impacted, the Federation colonists, to a comparable planet. After all, the Cardassians were pulling back and allowing entire civilizations to go free. And they were willing to do this if you gave them a planet that didn't originally have anyone on it. You just had to move the colonists who had moved there on their own. Done. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, after all. It was a great deal. Except for the people who owned the homes you just gave away. So while all of this could make sense from an eagle's eye point of view, it was hard to understand when the Cardassians poisoned you, and your family, or they beat your spouse, or worse, they beat your children. It was hard to understand when it was proven that the Cardassian High Command was giving military-grade weapons to the Cardassian colonists. And you know what? If Starfleet was too busy to take care of the citizens that it swore an oath to, if it was stretched too thin, then maybe the Federation wasn't for the colonists. And it was at this point when the Federation wanted to continue investigations into Cardassian meddling but not actually do something, that the rebellion began. So let's just be honest here. The Maquis were terrorists. That's true. They were also freedom fighters. But more importantly, that I think people forget, they were nation-state building. Effectively, the Maquis were going to throw the Cardassians out and have their own government of a sort. They didn't want the Federation anymore. When the Maquis had decided enough was enough, they came out fighting. Within only a few weeks of their plans, a freighter that was suspected of running weapons to the Cardassians was destroyed near Deep Space Nine. Gold Dukat, a well-known goal, had been captured, and an attack upon a Cardassian's weapon depot was planned. The attack on the depot would be thwarted and Gold Dukat rescued by Starfleet officer Benjamin Sisko, but the Maquis had shown they were a real threat. The Cardassian colonists, likewise, would stop being subtle in their maneuvers and would openly confront the Federation colonists. This would become known as an underground war that would occur between the two factions. One side Cardassian colonists, the other side Federation. Both of these factions would vie for control of the DMZ. The Cardassian Union, never really liking the agreement that had been struck, would attempt to tie the Maquis to the Federation and Starfleet. If it could be proven that Starfleet was aiding the Maquis, then the Cardassians could invade the DMZ and forcibly destroy all Maquis forces. Chief Miles O'Brien of Deep Space Nine was framed for carrying military-grade weapons to the Maquis. Ultimately, he was exonerated when it was proven that this had been a Cardassian ruse. This ruse by the Cardassians weakened them further. The Maquis would continue to gain in power and prestige. As time went on, Starfleet officers would leave to become a part of the Maquis, whether they were currently serving or had been discharged from Starfleet. Ironically, many species would sympathize with the Maquis as well. We would see Bajoran, Betazoid, Bolian, Klingon, Vulcan, Human, and many others who would all become a part of the Maquis, who would all want to establish a nation-state for these people. But even with the tactical knowledge of Starfleet, even with the weapons they were now receiving, the Maquis would come to a stalemate with the Cardassian colonists. Though even with this standoff, the Maquis would slowly continue to be growing and continue to increase in power. The Cardassian colonists would find themselves ultimately outmatched. One of the most interesting attacks, and possibly the most brazen, was an attack by Thomas Riker. Thomas Riker was William T. Riker's clone. He was a clone. I don't, I don't care what you say, he was a clone. And through some espionage, he was able to gain control of the Defiant. Using the Defiant, he attacked several Cardassian installations. 
But this was just a diversion. He was ultimately seeking to uncover a secret fleet being constructed by the Cardassian Union. And ironically, he did uncover this fleet. Again, while he was right that a secret fleet was being constructed, this would ultimately be the fleet that was meant for the Dominion. For the next two years, internal conflicts within the Cardassian Union would allow the Maquis to grow. They would become the dominant power in the DMZ. When all of this first started, it was because Cardassian colonists would bully Federation colonists, and that the Cardassian Union would help the Cardassians in order to get better weapons. But now, in 2372, the Maquis all but controlled these areas. Next week, I'll complete this specific breakdown with an in-depth discussion of the Maquis and how they almost had their own nation state. But ultimately, we're also going to discuss how Starfleet set back and let the Dominion kill all of the Federation citizens within the DMZ. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. This one was shorter than I had intended because I had a piece of glass the size of a penny removed from my foot today. So it's been a great day for me. I hope you enjoyed this and I will look forward to next week. But on that note, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.